Morning all, I've owned this 16 year old Honda VFR 800 for a few months now and every time I go out for a ride on her I often think how does it still stand up against today's modern bikes with super powered engines and fancy electronics? Does it still have a place on today's roads? Let's go for a spin and find out. So good morning everybody and uh, it's a wonderful day here in Ireland. Yeah, I've owned the uh, the bike for six months now. Um, I don't know if you saw the restoration video I did on it, but uh, first of all, I bought the bike for 4,350 euro. And uh, now I spent a, a considerable amount more making the bike exactly how I wanted it. I think it came out just over seven grand in the end. But that was down to my own taste and my own preferences, really. Uh, the bike was perfectly rideable when I bought it for that amount of money. Now, that sort of got me thinking quite a bit since I bought this you know do you really need to be spending 12 to 15 thousand euro now on a modern day bike to have the same amount of fun on the roads um, well the short answer is I don't think so no in fact I do know I not not only do I not think so I actually know after riding this uh, that you don't need to spend that amount of money if you're looking for thrills um, so let's kick off first with the engine on this bike it is of course the <laughs> the famous oh poor little putty cat it's okay it is of course the famous and of now legendary status the v4 engine i'll come on to the vtec part of the engine in a minute but the reputation of this bike is actually built on the engine and i'd say the engine alone um, it doesn't matter how old the bikes are and in what condition, people still seem to be buying these bikes because of the engine. Now, uh, talk, talk about fun. It's a 781cc engine and um, at uh, 10,500 revs it creates 110 horsepower and at 8,500 revs it creates 85 newton meters of torque. What does that mean in layman's terms? Well, it means 0 to 60 in 3 seconds and a top speed of 155 mile an hour. I mean, I'm sorry, who in the right mind needs any more than that uh, on the roads nowadays? Well, I mean, if you're on a track, it's a different, different story, but I'm not talking about just using one of these as a track bike. I'm talking about using one of these VFR 800s as an everyday bike. I mean, that's massive massive power uh, great performance i mean compared to the modern day super bikes now well like a, a, a jigsaw 1000 or a fireblade which will do 100 mile an hour in first gear i'm sorry but where on earth is anybody going to use that i was over in uh, england recently in fact i got back yesterday working for a fortnight and everywhere in england and uh, again i traveled quite a bit um, every single motorway network in England is covered with cameras. You cannot do that sort of speed uh, in England anymore. It's not as bad here in Ireland just yet. I have no doubt they'll get that way. Um, now on the back roads, like what I'm on at the moment, obviously you can't do that sort of uh, speed and test out that performance anyway. And that's what, what sort of leads me on to the VTEC uh, within this engine as well, which is another inc incredible characteristic Honda, uh, Honda introduced on this engine uh, from 2002 onwards I believe um, so just to clarify this is the 2007 model so it's the sixth generation VFR but the VTEC basically there's four cylinders uh, and within each cylinder there are four valves and up to 6800 rpm on this bike now, bear in mind, uh, it won't do any of this fancy VTEC stuff until your bike gets up to, uh, I think it's 75 degrees. I'm actually nearly there looking at the clock. Um, but uh, when you hit 6,800 6, RPM, it'll then go into VTEC. It's considered variable valve timing. It's not really. It's just, uh, it's actually um, a, um, an oil valve which opens the other two valves per um, per cylinder um, so what what that means is that down low in the box is that you, ha you have incredible torque as well as a nice smooth riding for touring I mean after all let's not forget this is designed as a sports tourer 
and uh, there's the other word sports so after 6800 rpm if you really want to when it kicks into uh, vtech there there you have the sport and there you have the the fierce uh, acceleration up high in the box so you have the best of both worlds with this bike now uh, when when it was introduced it was fairly clunky and uh, a little bit of a shock to the system when the VTEC kicked in so I'm led to believe I never rode one of the early bikes but with this it's quite gradual you can feel it all right um, and you can most, uh, mainly hear it in terms of the engine note kicking in uh, but it's a, gr it's a great little uh, adrenaline boost for the soul <laughs> For the soul when it does kick in if i do get on a straight road actually i'll uh, i'll try and demonstrate it to you i think there's a straight road not too far from here so you do you have the best of both worlds within the engine and uh, like i say with a top speed of 155 mile an hour who needs any more than that some of the other bikes i have and if you've been following me for a while um you'll know um that i own an aprilia rs660 um, I mean, uh, I would never dream of, do, uh, uh, of trying to outmatch the performance of this on the Aprilia RS660, ex except on a track, of course, again. But, uh, but on the roads, there's just nowhere to do that sort of uh, speed anymore. So, the answer to my first question regarding the engine is, you know, does it still stand up? against modern day bikes 100 percent of course it does and then you've got the added uh, bonus of the reliability um, of the honda engine this one in particular um, you know the the bulletproof um, they very rarely fail and especially if they're looked after um, nothing goes wrong with them so i'm just entering a stretch of road where i can uh, open her up a little bit just get around this bend and uh, we'll put her into vtech Incidentally, before I do, uh, you may have seen my, my endeavours to try and make the bike a lot more, well, quiet and user-friendly in, in terms of inside the helmet because I was really struggling, especially when I was vlogging like this, on actually hearing myself inside the helmet because it was so noisy. So, uh, Richie Vida, um, and those of you who like a VFR will know that a VFR 800 is synonymous with uh, Richie because, uh, well, he's literally travelled the world on his and uh, you know he built his youtube channel um, on the strength of one of these bikes but uh, so richie recommended this screen which is the puig uh, racing screen and then i added the wind deflector as well on top which uh, for my height at five foot eight it, um, it really does throw the wind over the top of me still a little bit noisy but nothing compared to how it was when it uh, came um, with the screen which was on it and then I also tried the Givy screen as well which was no good but anyway let's uh, get this little baby into VTEC so if you can see the rev counter there we're down at about 4,000 rev and uh, I'm probably gonna have to do a reverse angle for me um, well of me now because I can't reveal the speedo and it's quite uh, difficult to smudge out that speedo I've learned when it's so small um, so we'll get around this corner and take it above 6,800 rpm Okay, here we go. I'll just drop down the gear. We're in VTEC now, and I've just got that lovely little kick. <laughs> it really is like, like an injection. It's beautiful. <laughs> but it, like I said earlier, it's smooth. It's not, it's not a violent uh, sort of turbo-powered rocket boost or anything like that. So now we have all four valves open in all four cylinders. I think it drops out of VTEC once you go below six and a half thousand revs. It's probably done that right now because I've had to slow down for them bends. So we're in, when you're in VTEC, this is what I also nickname as gymnastic mode because when, when you're up there in the box, I mean, that's what, that's what just gives the bike all of this excitement. It's, oh yes. This is absolutely beautiful. You can hear the engine just howling there. So it purrs at a low speed, it just goes into a howl. Oh, look at this. To be honest, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit addictive and you do have to have a word with yourself. You have to check in with yourself every now and again because this, this could bike could get you into a lot, a lot of trouble. And that's exactly 
the message I'm trying to talk to you today about. It holds up today so well with, with a modern bike. 16 years old this is. And it still thrills and excites, just like you've seen there. So what we have there is all four valves operating on all four cylinders. So it's fully wide open and um, it's given you the maximum out of the engine. And this is the, uh, <laughs> the beautiful thing about Ireland in so many ways. The character of Ireland, you know, so just once you can enjoy those incredible roads and really tear it up, you come round the next bend and, uh, and uh, we're met with this. It's lovely. I really like it. Um, but again, so I'm uh, out of VTEC now and I'm just enjoying the countryside. <laughs> <laughs> That's, it really surmises what the bike was built for, in my opinion. It's like riding two different bikes in many ways. Uh, now let me just, as I'm doing this lovely scenic tour of Ireland, let me talk about the comfort, okay, for a second, because that's the other thing I wanted to add. Uh, its wet weight is just over 240 kilograms. I don't know if those of you remember when I had the FJR, I just couldn't handle the weight of that bike um, because the wet weight of the FJR was 290. So it was 50 kilograms heavier than this. Now the beauty of this bike is that it seems to be carrying the weight down low as well. So even when you're moving it around um, uh, uh, within the garage or um, in a parking uh, lot, it, it's very easy to do, obviously leaning it against you ever so slightly. Hasn't got a great turn and circle, I'll be honest, but um, it's got uh, quite a long rake, I would have uh, I would have thought, because of the size of bike it is. Um, but that really doesn't bother me. I mean, who's ever in a rush in a parking lot to turn the bike around? Not me. That's not one of the things I look at when I'm looking at the specifications of a bike. But uh, yeah, so wet weight, 240 kilograms. We'll get past this tractor now. Track nothing behind me. And uh, it does, now it's not great on the fuel economy. It's uh, averaging for me about 45 miles to the gallon uh, on a trip. Now with a 20, it's 22 litre tank this has. Um, I'm sort of getting 180 miles really um, in, in real world uh, journey riding, which is fine because I don't know if you, if you're like me, I mean, I don't, I don't know anybody who can sort of sit on a bike for 180 miles without stopping to stretch their legs. Um, so I use a fuel stop as a good excuse for a coffee and, you know, uh, like I say, stretch the legs. Um, so to me, that's a, a very acceptable range. And even when I'm doing trips around Ireland, um, I'm always where I need to go within 180 miles. Granted, we have a very small country here, <laughs> but 180 miles is very acceptable for, uh, for me. I don't know if you remember when the VFR 1200 came out. I really don't know what Honda were thinking with that. Beautiful looking bike, don't get me wrong. And again, another great engine, but the fuel tank was 19 litres, so a three litre reduction on the 1200 fuel tank. and. Uh, a much lesser economy as well so and I think that was the downfall of the VFR 1200 because people were obviously buying them as an improvement on this uh, hoping for better performance and uh, uh, well much better range well a, a little bit similar to I suppose the GS Adventure in the BMW range uh, as opposed to the GS range you know um, you can go further afield without having to stop if you don't want to um, that wasn't to be with the 1200 so I pretty much died to death and I dare say that could have led to the downfall of this uh, VFR range which sadly is no longer in production but despite the weight uh, of this bike and it it is uh, fairly heavy still for a sort of mid-size sports tour albeit on the upper echelons of the word mid uh, it doesn't really feel heavy at all um, now the seat height is 805 millimeters and again that was the same seat height as the FGR so it's actually a great bike to compare it to in terms of weight and feel and riding position but uh, so the pegs are down quite low as well so I don't feel as though I've got my legs tucked up I don't feel awkward riding this and why would I at my height <laughs> um, it, it's a very comfortable riding position I could sit here all day long I really could now to add on to that I've got the um, the bar risers on this model so it does make the riding position even more comfortable for me anyway 
obviously if you want that sportier feel then uh, stick with the, the bikes as stock but it's such a beautiful riding position and uh, I can take all the weight off my elbows just by gripping the tank as well with my knees and uh, obviously there's no cruise control on this bike so yes that segue is lovely into the electronics um, so as I said no cruise control um, I do miss that I'll be, on, I'll be honest especially if I'm on a longer run but I suppose it's just about uh, getting used to it in fact out of all the electronics I'd say it's the cruise control I miss most imagine that back in the day where's my cruise control <laughs> back in 2007 and uh, the other thing is that the, obviously the standard model does not have or this age model doesn't have a quick shifter but you can get that added if you if you really want uh, in many ways getting on a, a bike which is 16 years old it, it does something to my head and the way I feel as well uh, I suppose it introduces a little bit of nostalgia and I really quite like that um, you know it does take me back to the well the days I started riding which was my god back in 1991 I think it was and uh, one of the first bikes I had actually which was a, in 1994 I owned a CBR 600 I'll flash that up on screen now posted that on social media recently I was delighted I found that photograph in the photograph box and uh, I loved everything about that bike except uh, it I really had to uh, make the engine scream to to get the excitement out of it to be honest but uh, but then I, I, I didn't know much better than that I hadn't ridden many bikes then so obviously knowing what I know now you're always looking for that bit more performance I certainly don't feel as though I need the IMU with the the, the, the cornering electron well there's no electronics to introduce on an IMU the only electronics this bike has is uh, ABS so I don't miss any of that stuff. I mean, this doesn't even have a gear indicator. In many ways, you, it does connect you more with the bike. Uh, and it is that old fashioned, dare I say, old fashioned on a bike like this. Not quite old fashioned, but you know, it, it is, it's going back to bare bones, basic riding. And uh, it would sharpen many person's skills. I would hate the idea that people rely on modern day electronics to stay safe uh, that there as a plus and an accessory to uh, to to make it what you should be already making a safe ride um, the safety of a bike is uh, down to you not not the bike really and uh, I'm a firm believer of that what this bike does have which I think is uh, very advanced for its time is uh, ju a dual braking system so uh, if you touch the front brakes um, it operates one of the calipers or one pot in the caliper on the rear um, and again if you touch the rear brake it operates one of the calipers in the front brakes what that does well apart from giving you a much uh, better stop uh, and it, it, I have tried it I'm not going to do it here because I've got cars coming up behind me uh, and uh, in front of me as well it's not the ideal road to demonstrate that unfortunately but uh, what that does apart from making you stop noticeably quicker is that it really levels the bike out I'm, I'm doing it now you probably can't see on the camera so I was using the foot the rear brake and the um, and the front brake um, and what happens is that the bike doesn't dip at all now I'm not saying that it's got the same effect as a tally lever uh, suspension system like on a GS but it does smooth out that brake and it doesn't dive basically uh, it doesn't dive on the front it, it, it really does make the braking feel a, a lot more calm even though it's not it's quite aggressive the uh, the ABS works extremely well on this also now let's talk about the suspension for a moment um, this is the again the 2007 model just in case you're tuning in so this model has the uh, the dial on the back which makes it easier in many ways um, I'm very happy the way it's set I think there's 14 notches on the dial uh, and I'm exactly at halfway and for me my weight which is a hundred and ninety five pounds um, I'm very happy that the bike feels absolutely planted feels solid um, when I go over bumps um, it, it feels totally in control when I'm coming out of um, steep bends uh, I don't feel as though the bike wants to go wide because I have uh, the suspension on the back set too soft or anything like that. Um, it, it just feels perfect for me. Obviously, 
you'll have to tailor, tailor make your suspension, as we do on all of our bikes, to your own um, size and weight. Unfortunately, one of the things which was taken away from me, although the bike does come with uh, uh, rebound and preload um, on the suspension, I don't have the option on the front forks of adjusting anything because when I bought the bike, um, it obviously it had been changed out by a previous owner or an, an owner before that. Um, but when I rode the bike, I thought, okay, yeah, it feels perfect for me. Uh, I did soften up the suspension a little bit. Uh, to my liking on the rear but uh, I'm very very happy with the way the bike handles and feels so it's perfect for me and um, unless I was going to go on track I've absolutely no need to change what I have dialed in there now. Back to the engine for a moment the um, the maintenance they say it needs a, a full valve replacement every 16,000 miles but then there are many connoisseurs <laughs> if you like it will include my uh, my local dealer um, who serviced this for me when I first bought it who said you know if your engine's not playing up just service it so uh, a firm believer in you know in that that, that old uh, that old saying if it's not broken don't fix it I'm a bit like that myself well I've learned to, to be because uh, I am a, a bit of a tinkerer <laughs> but I've learned the hard way great bends here Okay, well, let's head back into VTEC, will we? There we go. The bike feels absolutely solid. It really is gorgeous to ride this. I get the same amount, if not more, <laughs> the same amount of uh, thrills riding this as I would, say, the Aprilia the RS 660 you know it really is brilliant in a future video I'll try and bring you um, some raw engine noise just of this bike because I don't think you'll be able to hear it on my mic setup the way I have things these days but uh, I am making a, a video very soon actually um, about recording on the two G uh, DJI wireless mics going into the one camera where you can uh, record your engine feed and your voice feed separately so you can do a mix between the the two sources until you you find something uh, you're very very happy with okay busy little segment of road here actually I might have to fill up with the uh, petrol which I'll do now before I carry on anymore Now, like I say, it's a 22-litre tank, so it, <laughs> it does co cost quite a bit to fill it. I don't know if you can see the red reserve flashing there. It's got uh, a 30-mile reserve in the tank, which is, well, I suppose it's standard. Um, <laughs> I've tested uh, other bikes way beyond that and found that I've been all right, by the grace of God. Uh, I don't really want to test this one. <laughs> it doesn't deserve it. It deserves a little bit more love. Um, uh, especially at the age of this bike. Okay, I'll fill up and I'll be back to you um, within a few moments. Okay, back on board. That wasn't cheap. As I said, I thought it wasn't going to be. Um, that was 28 euro to fill up. So yeah, quite pricey. Um, I've just noticed, I don't know if you can see down there, the, uh, the tank protector I bought which was a, a cheapy on uh, Amazon, I think, down there. It's starting to come off. You see that? Maybe it's not. That leaves me bellies in the way. Um, so I'll have to get another one of them. I don't don't like it when stickers come off. I think it makes the bike look bloody awful. As you know, I like to keep the bikes looking good. Um, I've, uh, this is great, actually. This is the first time I've uh, come out this year with these gloves on, which are my lighter uh, Alpine Stars gloves. I have the Risha, um, or Richa, however you, you, you want to pronounce it, uh, gloves which I've been wearing, it seems like forever, but probably only for the last four or five months over the winter. But it's lovely to come out with the uh, lighter gloves on. It really does connect you more with the road. I love love the feedback you get through the bars with the lighter set of gloves on. Okay, um, let's carry on because uh, I'm 
coming up to, uh, well, the most important thing for me about any motorbike. And look at that, was that a, a modern day VFR which has just passed me? Didn't see him properly there, I was looking in the rear view mirror to see if I could pull out. Um, turn left here. Lots of loose gravel on these roads, I think they're, uh, they're just filling in all of the uh, potholes again after the, the bad winter we had. So visor down, get past this tractor. And again, that beautiful VTEC. <laughs> it, uh, it really is a superb characteristic. I've actually been out on other bikes where um, I wouldn't say I've relied on it, um, but where I've been expecting it to come in. And then, of course, it isn't on the other bikes. <laughs> so in many ways, I'm, I miss it. You grow to love it. And uh, like any bike, you grow to love characteristics of the bike. and. Uh, little quirks as well. Is it too early for an ice cream? Oh uh, yeah, I haven't even had breakfast yet. Now this is the thing, as I've just done there, I was about to pull out and I saw him coming um, on the VFR, uh, not the VFR, I'm on the VFR, I'll get ahead of this guy. On the VFR, the, why do I keep saying the VFR, I'm on the VFR, on the FJR. I might have just lost the bike as I did on a couple of occasions there. You know when you, uh, you've committed to pull out and then all of a sudden you realize that uh, you should stop for whatever reason as uh, what just happened there. And because your weight has gone over on the bike, um, the FJR for me was far too heavy to, to rescue. And I dropped the bike on a few occasions. It's quite embarrassing when that happens, isn't it? Just get over this little speed bump. So yeah, leading up to the uh, the most important thing now for me is its looks, which is what I choose every single bike on, which I've had over the years. If I love the look of it, then I'll start exploring everything else about the bike. But if I don't like the look of it, then I don't care if it's the most efficient or the, the, the fastest or the most exciting bike in the world underneath uh, the tank. I, I won't go near it if I don't like the looks of it. And uh, this bike is one of the bikes, well, I'd say single-handedly, the bike, which got me by, back into biking. I've always wanted one since I saw them come out. And uh, as many of you know, I took a, a break from biking, a 30-year break. And uh, I only got back into this three years ago now, is it? Um, in lockdown. Um, but the bike which got me back into it was this. I'd seen these for years and always thought oh god almighty they are i don't know what it was i'd, I'd always just looked at them um in lust for want of a better word uh drooled over these bikes and then uh, in lockdown i started uh, looking at youtube as <laughs> as we all did um and uh, i started looking up videos of of this and then uh, obviously found richie vida's channel and uh, like I said earlier in this video, I think, uh, Richie's been all over the world on his and built his channel on this bike. Um, I then got to become pals with Rich and uh, he sort of, uh, in fact, I remember the time we sat in, sat in a hotel bar having coffee and uh, uh, we were both discussing our favorite color and we both said it was this color with the gold wheels and the, the graphite gray frame. We both agreed on that, and that's exactly what I've had done. So, uh, <laughs> please, Rich feels the same, even though he's got the silver one. But, uh, but I started watching all of his videos. Well, of course, there was no, go no going back then. As soon as I, I'd seen how the bike excited him and where he could go uh, on his bike, I, uh, that was it. As, uh, as soon I was, as soon as I was going to find the right bike, I was going to get one. It took me a while to find the right bike, especially in Little Old Island. There's not a great deal of them for sale, and the ones which are for sale, oh god, they're such a, well, like any bike, I suppose, such few and far between, you know, uh, the adverts never, ever uh, describe correctly how the bike's condition was. I won't go into that again. So, the, lo the looks for me is basically what got me back into biking. I just think to look at this bike, it's still in my top three sexy bikes on the road and that could be i'm not going to reveal the top
top three sexy bikes. Maybe that's for another video. Um, but this is definitely in the top three of my favourite looking bikes of all time on the road. So there you go. Uh, I can't really say a higher accolade than that. And uh, as we all say, the, uh, the bike which excites you is the bike for you. And uh, even when I can't ride it on a rainy day, I'll be out in the garage. Yeah, I say that with pride. <laughs> if you haven't seen my recent video on my new garage build, go and check that out. Oh my God, the pain. Um, but I, I, I'm just delighted now to have a garage. It seems weird. It's, it's, it's like, you know when you marry a girlfriend after years of being, being with her and then you start calling her your wife? I feel a bit like that when I say the word garage. Yeah, I've got a garage. Um, so, so when I go into the garage and see this bike, it just does everything inside of me. It, it just it, it conjures up dreams, it conjures up excitement, and it conjures up a drool. Uh, I, I, I can't say enough about the looks of this bike. And the uh, the rear, you know, the the swing arm. I think Honda copyrighted the swing arm uh, back uh, back when they made this bike, and they called it the Pro Arm. Uh, I don't know um, how much they've done with that copyright since, but uh, that really adds to the to the looks for me. And uh, the uh, two exhausts tucked underneath the, the seat. Although, is it just me? Uh, does anybody else see uh, the Terminator in this shot? Every time I approach the bike from the behind us to get on it all I can see is uh, the Terminator shooting 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 his guns at me is there anything I don't like about this bike no do I still think it stands up with modern bikes today in 2023 on the road this 16 year old VFR 800 yes of course it does 100% and in many ways surpasses them I think the the looks are unrivaled the engine is pretty much legendary status, as I've discussed, uh, and the performances. Um, who's going to need more, unless you're on a track? Uh, I just think it's an incredible machine, all-round machine, uh, and that's why um, they're very difficult now to find a good second-hand one, because slowly but surely everybody's realising that we, we don't necessarily need all the, the fancy electrics. and. Uh, the massive fuel economy and the, the huge range tank. We don't need all of that. Let's uh, strip it back a bit. You know, before all of this stuff was invented, we rode bikes like this anyway. It's only what we know now which affects our decision to buy a bike, but this this is just an all-round, 100% incredible machine. Well, that was a splendid, splendid ride out. I just had a ball there, folks. Uh, I hope you enjoyed um, that spin out as well. And uh, maybe you don't agree with anything I've said, but uh, maybe it resonates with you with a lot I've said. So if it does and you enjoyed this video, please consider uh, giving me a like and a subscribe. Uh, the channel is actually growing at a rate of knots now. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm delighted about that. I'm really desperately trying to get to the 10,000 mark. It was, it's always been a milestone of mine since uh, I started the channel. One thing I'm really trying to build as well is my Instagram following. Uh, it seems very slow. I don't know why. Um, but uh, if you wouldn't mind giving me a like on Instagram as well. I'm uh, under there as Wheelie Good TV as well. Uh, really great having you along on this ride. It's such a pleasure. And you know... The other thing is, that even though I'm in VTEC there quite a bit, uh, the bike doesn't scare me, it doesn't frighten me. I'm just happy out. It's a lovely place to be. I feel very, very comfortable. Uh, and that's all testament to this incredible 2007 VFR 800. If you're thinking about buying one of these, don't even question it. There you go. That's just cost you a few quid, hasn't it? <laughs> See you this time next week, folks. Uh, 8 o'clock every Saturday morning is uh, my slot on YouTube. Thanks a million for coming along. Dave Perry, Wheelie Good TV. Ride safe and have a great week, everybody. Over and out.